The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for RadioLawTalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, RadioLawTalk.com. Welcome to another edition of Radio Law Talk. I'm Todd Cunin, filling in for Fred Penny. Seated to my right is Denise Dirks. Denise, how are you on this fine broadcast day? I'm doing really well, and I've had, I'm having a lot of fun with the show today. That is good to hear. And yeah. beh- behind the glass is the one and only... Calvin Hunter. Cal, how you doing? Legend in my own mind. I'm doing well, thank you, <laughs> and uh, glad to be here with you both. It's great to, great to be able to do the show. We've got a lot of topics to talk about, legally speaking, this hour. We're going to be talking about, oh, HBO and Michael Jackson. We'll talk about Katy Perry, Kawhi Leonard, and others as we discuss things going forward in the legal world. And trying to make it interesting for you, trying to answer the age-old question that all listeners have, which is, yeah, what's this got to do with me? So we'll see how we can go forward with that. But as we do in every case, in every segment of Radio Law Talk, we're on for three hours, and at the top of every hour is case or no case. Cal, what do you have for us? Now it's time to play Case or No Case. Yay! Well. I am so glad that you asked that question, Mr. Kunitz. So glad. I'm going to take you now to what used to be one of the hottest resort towns in the United States of America, Branson, Missouri. Still a popular tourist attraction? Well, not like it once was, and perhaps our story on case or no case is why. There are two airports servicing tiny Branson, Missouri. Branson Airport has a regular Southwest Airlines service, or it did, and the smaller Taney County Airport with a runway barely half the length of that of Branson. Somehow, though, Captain and First Officer of a Southwest Flight 4013 from Chicago mixed up the airports, they're only seven miles apart, and landed on the wrong one. Nobody was physically injured, but at least one career was ended and things could have been much worse. The passengers had to wait for two hours before being allowed off the plane because they had no way to get them down off the plane without popping the emergency chutes. And Southwest wasn't going to do that because that's a very expensive thing. And the mood is somber, wrote one passenger, when we realized we were 40 feet from the edge of a cliff. Oh, my. Right? It was bad. Uh, the cabin was filled with smoke from the brakes, from the pilot jamming on those brakes. Troy Haynes, pardon me, lived in the area and had flown into the Branson Airport many times. He said, I knew they were landing on the long one, wrong one well before they even figured it out. I tried to tell somebody. They wouldn't listen to me. Then he said he was immediately struck with fear and anxiety over crashing. And he suffered severe mental anguish, fear and anxiety, including a panic attack, which caused him to be removed from another airline prior to takeoff. And that, in turn, led him to stop flying. And that, in turn, led him to seek legal counsel. And so I ask you... Oh, no. Case. I'm glad you're going for it. no case. <laughs> <laughs> I skate on this one. Hey, I, I, I forgot. I didn't get the name of the um, victim. Uh, I will tell you. Let me... Ta, uh, Troy Haynes... H-A-I-N-E-S, like the underwear. Troy Haynes. Okay? Well, Troy Haynes seeking to harvest the fruit of the loom of the litigatory <laughs> tree. Well, which, which he had to change after the... Uh, yeah, after I, I, the I heard he soiled them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, it, it, it would be interesting if the first initials of the... Plaintiff and defendant were B for plaintiff and D for defendant, because then it would be BVD, exactly. which is another underwear-related <laughs> pun. Yes, I put, uh, <laughs> Denise yeah. is looking at me like, huh? What? Okay, so... It's your BVDs. Right, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so does he have a claim for basically these torts, which is what they're called? I did not realize till I was in law school that tort... Tort law, personal injury, 
carries with it the same root. The word tort is the same as the root of the word torture. I never knew that before I got to Somehow law school. Somehow seems appropriate. It if you, does. If you've it ever does. been sued, you know why it would be called yes. that. <laughs> so, um, so is he entitled to... Does he have a claim for damages here because the airplane landed on the wrong runway in the wrong airport? I would, I would have to assume that the pilots at some point in time noticed the lack of, I don't know, jets and the prevalence of Cessnas at the smaller airport. Sure. Once they heard the wheels go, <laughs> er, the other pilot goes, uh... Oh, Bob. Yeah. yeah. We better stop short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Since when do they let these crop dusters take off in commercial <laughs> airports? I don't know. But uh, you're, the, you're just delaying here a little bit I know, too long. I, I'm, st- I'm stalling. <laughs> I'm getting the expand, expand, ex- hoping that something, some comes kernel of wisdom comes into my mind because right now it's <laughs> toys in the attic. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that this is a case, all right? And strategically, I'm just going to say it's a case because I think the likelihood, statistically, the likelihood that Cal would go back to back on no cases is more remote than not. I'm not going to say I have done it it many a time. I'm not going to (laughs) say it has never happened. I'm playing the odds here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say it's a case. And I am going to say that there is some sort of. No. Plaintiff loses. No, well, wait wait a second. Some sort of settlement (laughs) on the part of the airline. If it were a more run-of-the-mill scenario, I would say the airline would have an incentive not to settle because they would not want to invite more lawsuits for commonly occurring things. But landing your plane on the wrong runway and having these issues is not something that's common, so the likelihood of potential lawsuits with this fact pattern are low. So they reach some sort of out-of-court settlement. To I, I was fascinated by it because I think it would be the same as a, as a tort lawyer saying, you know, my client almost got in a crash with a Toyota, so I'm going to sue Toyota. That's what fascinated me about this this idea Anyway, when I was well, writing wait, the wait. story. Who did, who did he – when you were writing the yeah, story? Yeah. Well, I mean, I always take everything and rewrite it. So Who who did he sue? Southwest. Okay, so he sued Southwest. So I just want to make sure that he wasn't suing the airplane manufacturer. He was suing the company that was operating the aircraft. The driver so, of the plane, yes. so to speak. All right, so I'm going to say case and it settles. Denise, what say you? I say that the career that ended was the pilot's career. That's correct. That he's done. Um, I would say that the two hours wait to get off the plane could be uh, uh, sued for because that's, in essence, false imprisonment. They just kept him in. Especially breathing brake smoke. Uh, the brake smoke and all of that. So there is a physical damages that he would have from that. And then certainly it could be intentional infliction of emotional distress as well because they landed at the wrong airport and he knew it. And it's foreseeable that... You, Somebody's going to be on that plane that's going to know the airport, been to the airport before, and know they're not landing at the correct airport. So we could have sued for that as well. So I, I think physical damage, I think the mental anguish, I think the false imprisonment, I think all of those are really good suits. And this is a famous case called Haynes versus Southwest. Yes. And we all know about this case. Well, okay, so you're saying it's a case. I'm saying that you made it up. <laughs> You're saying it's no case? I'm saying it's no case. It, it could be a really good case, but I'm saying it's no case. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, call in if you agree with me, 855-LAW-RADIO, or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. Good job. Good one. All right. Stay tuned. There is much more Radio Law Talk ahead, including the answer to case or no case, uh, so you can, you know, text your friends and maybe place a bet while we're, <laughs> while we're away. But more Radio Law Talk is coming right up right here. So please, don't go away. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com.
Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they are able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. I am Cameron Levitt, Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. So ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time, and it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable, things you'll want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose online with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com lettyandcompany.com Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family... Chris... Can you put the video game controller down for a second? I can talk and play. Oh, I'm totally annihilating this punk kid in Nebraska. I just feel like you're not acting like a grown-up in our relationship. M2, M2. Well, you know, you still ride your skateboard to work. There's the comic book collection, the race car bed. Look, I'm young at heart, but I put money to my 401k every paycheck. I picked up a few savings tips at feedthepig.org. I have control of my financial life now, and that feels pretty grown up. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. For free ideas and easy tips on ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. So, I bet I look like a grown up to you now. Well, except for the footy pajamas, I'd have to agree. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Radio Law Talk. I like that show. Radio Law Talk. Now, back to the show. So we are in the middle of case or no case, and Cal... I don't know. Denise says that Cal has tried to stump us again. <laughs> Denise alleging, alleging that Cal is violating the thou shalt not bear false witness commandment. <laughs> and I have said that Cal is, ha, has given us something truthful based on statistics, the statistical probability, and that the plaintiff recovers uh, that the 
guy on the plane recover. So, Cal, if you want, for those of us just joining, why don't you get it set up again for us and then tell us what our results sure. are. Sure. Remember the famous flight where a um, Southwest Airlines crew landed at the wrong airport when trying to come into Branson, Missouri. Branson had an airport big enough to handle the plane. The airport in which they landed did not have an airport big enough to handle the plane. It was, uh, I don't even know the name of the city, but that's not very thorough of me. I thought is you it? said Branson, Missouri. Yeah, Brett, but there was another airport seven miles away, and that's the city I don't remember the name of. Anyway. I thought it was tiny or something started with a T. Yeah, something small. So anyway, <laughs> the, the guy on the plane panicked. He said that this, uh, being on this airplane, having it jam on the brakes and smoky in the cabin and all that stuff, uh, caused him some emotional distress, and he sued. He's oh wait a minute, I guess I just gave it away, didn't I? He, those of you who say it is a case, Mr. Cunin. <laughs> now, Todd, I'm going to give you a bonus point. Uh-oh. There's an opportunity to get yet another point here. Now you've already gotten one. I've already gotten one. You say that it was settled. We'll talk about that in a moment. And you have a chance to get yet a third point, if you can get this correct. Okay. Well, that's really fair. Well, I mean, <laughs> I have it built into the into the question. So, plaintiff requested damages in the amount <clears throat> of seventy four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and nothing more. Yes. The obvious question for the bonus point is why not just round it up a penny? And ask for seventy-five grand. And I know the answer to this question. Okay, but you've got to know the proper legal name. But go ahead. Yeah. The reason that he did not allege seventy-five thousand and alleged seventy-four thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine was because he did not want this removed to federal court. And the seventy-five thousand dollars is the threshold. So he was trying to face. He was trying to fight off removal to federal court, and that's why he alleged one penny or dollar or whatever it is below seventy-five thousand. Yeah, because that's the amount at which someone can request removal. So yes. it was a. It was a, This is a. This is a law school case. Somebody told me, so I thought I'd have to use it because it has all these little elements in it. The stress, this, you know, the, all, all these other little torts, as you call them, and this removal issue. Uh, most often the defendant does this by showing the plaintiff and defendants are from different states. But in this case, it was the 75000 versus 74999999. So suing exactly for that one penny less blocks the move. So what happened at the end of the case? To be perfectly candid, we do not know. <laughs> Except, so we don't know if it's settled. We don't know if it... Here's what we know. We know that Southwest apologized, refunded all the passengers' ticket prices, mm. gave them travel credit as a gesture of goodwill. So even that, to me, is a minor settlement. Whether they whether they did more with this guy or not, I don't know. So I'm going to give Todd three points on this particular case. <laughs> or no case. Sorry, Denise. <laughs> you know, no, you know what that means, right? It means uh, it tots ahead. No, it means no. we're tied. Tied, that's right. Okay. I'm Darn not, it. I'm not looking at my numbers, but it means <laughs> that the next case or no case is critical. And aren't we still trailing Fred by quite a bit, though? Yeah, no. Fred's at 20. I'm, we're at 18. Yeah, you can. So, no, close. we can, we can yeah. tie him. We could tie him. And okay. by the way, this next one will either be double points or jeopardy points because we're doing our case or no case in Winslow. Arizona. Interesting. Until next time. And, and you know, keep in mind that issue about seventy-five thousand dollars and removal to federal court, because that's going to come up in a case we'll talk about probably later on this hour regarding the New Orleans Saints and a lawsuit that was filed there about the non-call in the playoffs this year. We'll get to that in a bit, but right now we're going to talk about Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson and the lawsuit by the Jackson estate against HBO. Now, for those of you that are not aware, HBO ran a documentary earlier this year called Leaving Neverland. I believe it was a two-part epi- two part series, and it followed the lives of two individuals who claimed to have been victims of uh, sexual 
molestation on the part of Michael Jackson. When, as children. As children, when they were 8, 9, 10 years old. And HBO, just before they started running this, had to deal with the estate for Michael Jackson claiming foul, claiming that HBO had previously entered a non-disparagement agreement between HBO and Michael Jackson based upon HBO's 1992 coverage of the then Michael Jackson, I believe it was the Dangerous Tour, how they did a little documentary about backstage, and they claimed that that non-disparagement clause in the contract for that production some 25 or so years earlier was still in place, and that precluded or should have prevented HBO from airing this documentary, which was clearly disparaging to Michael Jackson. When we come back from the break, we will talk about legally where that is going and how, even though this case involves two private parties, issues about the First Amendment, which typically prevents the government from encroaching on speech, how that is taking center stage in a legal issue here. We'll talk about that when we come back. Denise, if they want to call in, where do they call? 855-LAW-RADIO, or you can tweet us at Radio Law Talk. Or you can catch us on Twitter at Radio Law Talk. Be sure and comment there if you'd like. If you want to call in, you don't want to talk, you can give your comments to Cal. He'll be happy to relay those to us on the air. Cal, take it away. What's more, if you have any ideas for weird cases for case or no case send them to info at radiolawtalk.com that's our email address and only you see that that's right info at radiolawtalk.com all advertising for legal services on radio law talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed for more information go to radiolawtalk.com Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs, and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please, don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. That's 800-918-1376. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. 
Thanks, tax doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. All right, guys, we need to have you read some lines for our disclaimer promo. But first, can anybody tell me what a disclaimer is? All right, then. Well, uh, Denise, you go ahead. Non uti consilius me oriere por questus purpurium juris consult. Latin, that's a nice touch. Thank you, Denise. Next time we'll try it in English, if that's okay. Fred, how about you? Cal, I don't want to read all this. Can we just tell the people that we're discussing general legal issues and they should hire their own attorney instead of relying on what we have to say here? Well, we could, I guess. Uh, uh, Chris? I'm not going to be there anyway. Why have me do it? Let's, Let's have, have Todd, Todd do it. it. Me? Read disclaimers? Why, I couldn't. (coughs) The information you hear on Radio Law Talk is general... The preceding promo was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. Just a tip from your friends at Radio Law Talk. Be sure to read our disclaimers on radiolawtalk.com as well. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I feel like if I didn't have anyone to push me, I wouldn't have bothered to do it. I got one milestone down the drain, and now I got to work on the next. I see the future is really bright for me. I feel like it doesn't matter the age, as long as you go back and get it done. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. No one gets a diploma alone. You have more support than you realize. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Radio Law Talk. Now, back to the show. Halfway through this hour of Radio Law Talk, and we are cooking with gas and talking about HBO and the lawsuit facing that they are facing by the estate of Michael Jackson over the Never Leaving Neverland documentary that HBO put out earlier this year. Now, the specific issue that, that we're talking about here is, again, HBO says that the 1992 agreement with the Jackson estate, I mean, that is just over. It's done. It's gone. It doesn't apply to this. We we had agreed not to disparage him when we did that show in 92, Cal. Who came up with this legal theory? The, what legal theory about that, it? A legal theory saying, well, look, we signed a contract for a separate production all that time ago, and it certainly must apply now. I the mean, state I think of Jackson. It's fascinating yeah. to me. Well, yeah. to me, I'm looking at this non-disparagement clause. Is it a personal um, cause of action to sue on that contract for breach of contract that does not survive the death of Michael Jackson? That, I think that's, that's another issue. That's a big issue. issue. That's a huge issue. Ooh, good mm-hmm. one, yeah. Because, because – And that's one of the things that HBO is arguing. And the first issue, the first hurdle that they have is we've got a bit of a chicken and egg thing going on here. And I'll explain it this way. If the contract is controlling, if the 1992 contract is still in play and that has to be adhered to, well, that contract contains an arbitration clause. And HBO is making the argument that by throwing us into arbitration, if the if the state, by virtue of a court, is ordering that we have to go to arbitration based upon this clause, then we're being denied our First Amendment rights to do, among other things, raise certain defenses that should be heard in state court. That's one. But in order to get to whether or not the case should be ordered to arbitration— you have to decide whether or not the contract even applies. So does the contract apply to get us to arbitration? 
but we're going to go to arbitration to figure that out. But we can't go to arbitration if there's no con. <laughs> it so is. It's putting circular. the cart before the horse. Yes. You know, you back right into that whole um, circuit of thought. And th- in this particular case, I truly believe that whether or not the contract applies ha- is a legal question. It's not a factual question. It's a legal question. And I think a judge is going to have to decide that before they send it to arbitration. I, I agree with you. One of the, That's one of the arguments the HBO is making. The mm-hmm. other is with regard to what you talked about, bringing defamation claims after death. HBO is arguing that if you throw us into arbitration and, and rule that that's what can happen, then what the what's actually going to happen is that that's going to end up authorizing these disguised defamation after death claims you're going to allow these things to come in when they otherwise would not do so so totally agree so that's what's going yeah. on but the court has also said before okay before you guys go to arbitration the court has authorized HBO to file what's called an anti slap suit and SLAP stands for st- I love this, by Strategic the way. Lawsuit Against Public Policy. And this, in essence, is if one person files a lawsuit against another, we'll just say the argument would be that the Jackson estate has filed a lawsuit against HBO seeking to keep HBO from airing this documentary, which would be a violation, which HBO has freedom of speech rights to author it, to to put out. And even though it's a private party suing another private party, there's a public policy against the encroachment of that type of freedom of speech. And slap suits or anti-slap suits are designed to protect against that. So HBO is specifically saying that this frivolous suit by the estate of Jackson is taking up the court time, there's the government tie, yep. and silencing its speech, its yes. right to free speech. And the court, the, the state court, before throwing this into arbitration, has allowed HBO to fully brief this subject. And obviously the estate of Jackson can file their response briefs and whatnot, Uh HBO has to have theirs filed by the 15th of August, and a hearing has been set currently, and these things oftentimes are continued, but currently set for September 16th. So we'll follow up on this to see what the court rules. This is a, this is Especially an important the anti-slap. One. I yes. think what's going to happen, that's not going to go to arbitration, period. I, I agree. And so I'm really I'm, – I'm excited about this case because it's really postured in a different way, and it does seem to be aimed at – what could be viewed as a frivolous lawsuit? And arguably, if the court agrees with HBO on the anti-slap suit, then maybe there is no surviving lawsuit to go to arbitration. So a lot, a lot's hinging on this, and it affects the it affects the legal community in the sense that a lot of people looking at this, at this to see what other potential plaintiffs and defendants will be doing going forward. So we'll follow it. A lot of attorneys, when they get sued by the other side, they also bring an anti-slap suit against that other side because that's exactly what it's designed to protect from suits suing that just involve another case. And it's um, a kind of a frivolous slap on the, on the hand of the attorney and trying to, you know, almost defame that attorney in a way. So the anti-slap suit is a very good defense mechanism for attorneys. I completely agree with you on that. There's been wow. more. There's been more Scary. agreement between Todd and Denise in this show. Fred is never going to leave again because the 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 juice of this show has been the disagreements. It's when I sit in this chair, we're too close. <laughs> we're rubbing elbows. Yes. Uh, what? Let Let's go ahead and stay with the. Oh, we'll call it the Hollywood theme. Talk about Katy Perry. So Katy Perry. It's almost getting to be where it would not be a radio law talk without some sort of copyright copyright infringement lawsuit in music. Yeah, y'all know what it is. Katy Perry, Juicy J. Uh huh. This. Let's rage. Your boy's been a Christian. Right oh, Denise is now dancing here. Oh my God. Oh, she's doing the robot, the funky chicken. Oh. Praise God for the word and be it here. The word became flesh. Live for 30 years. 
I'm listening to this trying to find okay. the hook or the chorus. So, so what you started off with, Cal, was what you started off with was the Katy Perry song Dark Horse, Correct. right? And then did that morph into the second part was the Flame and Joyful Noise. Yes, the group Flame and Joyful Noise. And Flame, a rapper, a Christian rapper, is alleging that Katy Perry has infringed by using the chorus of the song. Denise, explain a little more about what's going on. Well, it's it's not it, it's the beat that is actually being claimed that um, she took from Flame, and Flame is known as Marcus Gray. He's... Now, did she sample the beat? No, no, it's 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 not that this is a very different type of an infringement case because normally the infringement cases are the written music, melody line, the melody lines, you know, where the chords go, you know, certain riffs, mm-hmm. riffs, <laughs> riffs, licks, riffs, chords and structures, not riffs, yes. yeah, riff, but riffs, riffs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah. you know, that's the normal type of infringement case. This case, he's claiming that she hook, line, and sinkered took the same beat from his music and used it for her chorus on um, Dark Horse. And it's really hard for me to distinguish. How would you copyright a beat? Uh, Unless yeah. she directly sampled it off the record. and I mean, because that happens sometimes. Just listen to theirs, put it in a sampling machine, said, oh, let's use that, moved it over and directly used their work how can you copyright a beat? Well, I, I, if he has that, um, the drums and the, the stuff, and he puts it on a little tape and sends it in and copyrights that beat, perhaps that's it. It's not music, though. It's not written music. Well, that, that's true. It's not. Now, copyright law has changed. We talked about the Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. stuff before. And the issue in the Led Zeppelin case that we had talked about in in previous episodes of Radio Law Talk, and you can find that in our podcast dealt with the sheet music because up until recently to get a copyright on music you had to have it transcribed and the transcription sheet music was what you got the copyright on now you can file the actual recording as a copyright which allows juries to listen to the recording and say oh this does or does not sound like that it is the same so this would probably fall into that purview, but it just didn't sound similar enough to me. If it was a jury of one, I think he would lose. Jury of three. And yes. I couldn't get it either. Yeah, I, I, mean, I tried to listen to it I mean, and I couldn't get it. I get it, but you can't cop- you can't copyright like a backbeat. <laughs> I mean, come on. I know. Come on. Well, stay with you us. Yeah. <laughs> stay with us. We'll come back. More Radio Law Talk is coming right up right here on this radio station and, of course, on RadioLawTalk.com. Stay right there. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Hi, I'm Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. I bet you're tired of hearing lawyer commercials. So just relax and listen to music for a few seconds. When you or a family member has been injured, call 800-616-4LAW or see us at pennyandassociates.com. See, that wasn't so bad. 
If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. I'm going to quick quack car wash, get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny, sexy, just because I want to don't drive dirty, going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest by far, we're talking three skinny minutes, sitting right in your car wash, a hundred feet of cloth, washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick quack, don't spruce her up, just like that. You'll be happy looking snappy, you'll be glad you was asked a quick quack. Car wash it on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick quack in the local area. Get in your car, get in your truck. Get on the road and come visit the dock. Quick Quack Car Wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. Quack Quack. I'm a veteran. We hit a mine in Vietnam. When I came home, I didn't know where to turn. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. My victory's been never giving up hope. My wife is always there to remind me we have a life to live. DAV provides a lifetime of support, helping veterans of every generation get the benefits they've earned. I am a veteran, but after I got out, I spent two years alone and homeless. Every year, DAV helps more than a million veterans so they can reach victories great and small. My victory was finding the support to get back on my feet. Now I'm getting things right with my family. I finally admitted with my PTSD, I wasn't doing well. But there's more to be done and more victories to be won. Now I wish I'd found DAV sooner. I am a veteran. My victory is just enjoying each day. Help support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. That is our Medoto. This is Radio Law Talk. And now, Back to the show. So we're talking about the Katy Perry lawsuit. You know, Led Zeppelin, during that lawsuit, they didn't allow the jury to hear the recordings of either songs because, again, based upon the controlling law at the time, the copyright was based upon the sheet music was filed that was filed. So they allowed people to come in and play the renditions of the sheet music, but they didn't play the actual songs that we're hearing right now. This is the song. This is Spirit. Is that the name of the song, Cal? Yes. And, and that's the name of the group. Spirit. The, group, Spirit, Spirit. the name of the group, and this is the song that Taurus. they Taurus that they claim that Stairway to Heaven infringed upon. Well, again, the, they did it based on the sheet music at the trial, not playing the actual song, an issue that was later taken up on appeal. But in the Katy Perry song, in the Katy Perry lawsuit, they actually, well, they wanted to play the music for the jury so the jury could hear. What happened? Well, Katy Perry's on the stand, so yes. imagine I, I'm a juror and I'm a fan already, right? So she said that she and the other co-creators of her um, uh, Dark Horse song, they'd never heard of uh, Grey before, um, and they never ever heard a song, Joyful Noise. And so she says there's no way we could have copied it. And then they were going to play her song in court so she could identify her own song and her attorneys were having technical difficulties with the equipment in court and they couldn't get it to play so katie perry said i can perform it live for you right now <laughs> can you imagine that'd be that would be interesting to that bring in that would be so fun <laughs> I just wanted to know who's running AV for a multi-million dollar trial, and they go, uh, I got nothing. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, the button that don't work. 
Yo, what, look, it, I usually <laughs> hook up the red wire to, to the, the red yeah, input, and it's I, not there. So, Your Honor, I don't know. <laughs> usually that's the purview. I mean, do you bring in your own stuff? or does? The, well, it I, depends on the courthouse. Because the modern courtrooms, at least uh, where we are, they have, man, they've got more audio video stuff than a theater. You I, know? I can tell you every trial that I have done where they have had the ability, and, and the court has these facilities where you can plug in and get everything done. Every one I've done, the court has said, if you're going to use this stuff, it's up to you to come in early and make sure that everything gets set up. It's not the court's issue. It's up to you to make sure that whatever medium you have works with us. Here's what we use. We, we Here's the inputs we have. So you bring something that's compatible with this. And that's what they work. Now, Denise, you raised something ish, interesting, and I, I will confess, I don't. I don't know the answer. I know I know what I think feels right about it. But you said that Katy Perry said that we could not have copied it from them because we had never heard it before, right? Yeah, we've never heard it before. We don't know this singer. We don't know of this singer. There's no way that we could have copied it. So, we never even heard of the artist before she was alleging. Exactly. Right? So, so uh, And le- both her and the truth – testified to the truth is the other code so let me ask this situation hypothetical all right and, and w- probably not to use this one let's use something that sounds a lot more similar let's say we've got two songs that sound a lot alike and then people would generally genuinely look at that and go oh this one clearly sounds like that one okay and let's say that hypothetically we can say that one party has never heard the, the infringing party has never heard the other song before. Does the copyright protection that the first party filed still protect them? Because, look, we've got two things that sound alike. Does copyright protection only protect against people that knowingly infringe, or does it also protect against unknowingly? And and, and the difference between knowing and unknowing is, well, if it was knowingly, your damages are going to be higher. But if it was an honest mistake, cure the mistake, but you don't get to continue to go forward. I got two hands up. Cal, you had your hand well, up I was going to say, I know in one case where uh, the one, one – and I wish I could think of it, what it was. If you don't intentionally do it, the judge ruled, well, that's an obvious idea then. More than one person came up with it at the same time. Therefore, it's an obvious idea. So your request for copyright protection cannot be granted because other people are coming up with the same idea at nearly the same time. Denise. Uh, in this particular case, though, there was no copyright. You have to know that the um, the flame, he actually didn't copyright it. And he it was available on YouTube. So it was out there in the public and a- available to be heard. And he could still claim copyright, on, although he didn't formally claim a copyright. And I think in this particular case, since it wasn't in existence in a copyright, but only out there to be heard, I think that's why in this case, Katy Perry may win. I, honestly, I, I remember back in when I was taking communications in college, the the professor in one of my classes talked about the poor man's copyright, which is if you create a recording, you pop that in a in an envelope and you mail it to yourself, certified mail, so that it bears the stamp of the post office. And the date and time. And, right. and the date and time, so you know that. I've done that. Yeah. He, he, he said to do that. A couple of the students did, and you know they got it back, and then they opened up the mail and pulled the thing out. And he said, well, no. you just destroyed your no. copyright. <laughs> you have to leave it in there. You, you mark on the outside so when it shows up, you know what it is, but you don't take it out. But, <laughs> Unclear uh, on the concept. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's... So, the, so the issue in this case is just a little different. The issue is, is was Joyful Noise widely distributed enough um, that it became copyrightable, or is it too short of an infringement on the on the works that it couldn't even be copyright protected. So that's a little different than enforcing or um, uh, your copyright. Well, they look and see how many views to see if it was widely enough. Out but there. That's part I, of it. Yeah, they think, looked at yeah. the views on YouTube. They and and of course Katy Perry's attorney is saying it's not widely distribu- distributed on YouTube. You know, it hasn't been widely distributed. Well, you know, and you don't have the right. And I'm just going to put on my skeptical hat here. If you track and I'm almost positive that you would see this borne out. If you track the number of lawsuits that have alleged copyright violations 
and you go back and you look at the the original recording that the artist says was illegally copied by somebody else, I bet there's a spike in YouTube's views, if that's all that is, iTunes sales, if it was available on iTunes. Anytime a lawsuit like this is brought, it's going to increase the exposure of the older song. And sometimes you look at this as sort of a marketing ploy, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, I want to get to and one. And it could that, very well be, to be honest. That is cynical. It is. is cynical it, it talk, is. <laughs> We're coming up on the end of the hour, but I don't want to close out before we hit this. The New Orleans Saints, if you remember the playoff game, there was the, the non-call on pass interference that allowed ultimately the Los Angeles Rams to win the game, so the Saints fans say. And, and then be embarrassed in the Super Bowl by the Patriots. Yes. And several lawsuits were filed seeking one lawsuit sought to have the game replayed from that point forward. It was ridiculous. But those were all filed in federal court, and they were all dismissed in federal court um, for various reasons. But one lawsuit was filed in the state court in Louisiana. Now, we had our case or no case earlier. And the case or no case earlier this hour dealt with why the plaintiff only sued for less than 75000 because he didn't want it removed to federal court based upon the amount. The state court claim seeks $75,000, and the attorney has said specifically that the reason he sought that amount was because he didn't want the case removed to federal court because all of the previous lawsuits that had been filed in federal court have been dismissed. And in this case here, the judge has ruled that the case has survived the initial attempt to get it dismissed, and it looks now like Roger Goodell and maybe the officials will be subject to discovery, deposition. They're being sued for fraud. And so they're going to peel the onion on this to see what actually goes back and forth between the commissioner and referees and, and the like. I think it's interesting. I can have arguments on both sides, but we'll follow it going forward in future episodes to see what happens with this lawsuit. And I learned a really valuable lesson, and that is don't ignore the NFL topics that we have because <laughs> i didn't read that <laughs> okay. i didn't read that so i wouldn't have gotten that question right cal take <laughs> us out uh, well what i'm going to do here is tell you that we have run into a little uh, do i have a technical problem i do i thought i did but i don't yay thanks for listening to radio law talk that's going to conclude this hour remember all three hours are available on radiolawtalk.com of course we're live there too we stream the show live every saturday 9 to noon Pacific. We'll be back. You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com, a copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated.